Tons of people have been asking me to cover Girls Last Tour since the first video I put out several months ago. It's probably my most requested video at this point, and was a show that I was looking for an excuse to watch anyway. After watching the show, I see why it was requested. There's a lot to unpack with regards to the music, and because of that I had a difficult time deciding what I wanted to focus on. Should I talk about how the music is integrated with the world? Should I talk about how it uses music to emphasize silence? Should I just do a full score analysis? I had all of these thoughts, and while they would all be really great aspects to talk about, one specific scene stuck in my head throughout watching and thinking about what to talk about. That scene was the very first scene, specifically the first 2 minutes and 39 seconds. You might be thinking, really? That's it? You're gonna talk about that? Yeah, I am. I went in completely blind about this show. All I knew was that it was two girls in a small tank-like vehicle in a world that I assumed was going to be war country. With that knowledge and that assumption in mind, the opening was much more unsettling than I expected visually. This first instance of many music to visual juxtapositions just stuck in my brain so strongly. So let's break down what the music and sound does in this opening scene that sets up the show and draws in the viewer so effectively. I would highly recommend watching this video with headphones as there are going to be a good amount of small noises not easily heard, but if you can't really do that, then uh, you should be able to get by with what I'm saying. You might miss out on one or two things, but that's okay. To start, let's talk about how the show draws you in. Sonically, the show starts with silence, which leads into the sound of water dripping with heavy reverb. This either gives the illusion of a very large area or gives the viewer an ethereal or otherworldly mental image. The sound of the water drops and the ripples is distorted into an unnerving high-pitched static sound. This leads into one final water droplet heavily affected by different means of compression, tons of reverb, EQ shelves, and delay. This is what causes it to be high-pitched and somewhat piercing, which is important because it contrasts the white noise that sounds like people exhaling and the simulated heartbeat that immediately follow. All of these noises are things that should make you feel a little uneasy, especially in combination with the somewhat cryptic visuals. As I said, the reverb and distortion on the water drops alludes to a very large space, and puts you in a somewhat dreamlike state. When coupled with the visuals, it induces a slight state of confusion. Adding the breath-like sound and the heartbeat invoke an almost primal feeling. If you think about it logically, you hear exhaling and a heartbeat coupled with nearly pitch-black visuals, it taps into a deep-seated natural human reaction. Heartbeat or rhythms close to a heartbeat are used very frequently for this very reason. If you've gone into this show blind, you won't know that this rumbling is that of the vehicle, and it could definitely pass as room sound or air. As the camera moves around, the low-pass filter and EQ shelves on the sound of the tires get changed to become clearer and give the illusion that it's getting closer. At this point in the show, if you went in blind, like I did, all you've heard is a low rumbling and all you've seen is a dark area resembling a factory. This causes even more feelings of unease. This isn't assuaged by the fact that the show now focuses on a screw that has come loose and is rattling around on the floor. This serves two purposes. One, to show that the area is dilapidated and falling apart. And two, to show that something big is coming. That big thing being the source of the rumbling which is getting brighter and more clear as the screw shakes more. The audio and video cut abruptly to the sound of a vehicle using a continuous track, the tank-like tread on the tires. With regard to sound design, this is interesting, because the filters that make the vehicle sound far away are removed entirely, and dispels any sort of confusion you could have about where that rumbling was coming from. Another very interesting thing here is when the camera pans out and you see the vehicle and hear it in all its glory, you can also hear the screw rattling away, getting louder, showing a continuity between the locations and a connection between all the sonic space.
There are several quick cuts focusing on things we've seen up to this point. The vehicle, the screws, and the water dripping from the pipe. All of the noise and sound design aid the visuals in subconsciously indicating to the listener that this isn't necessarily a safe place. It's run down, things are falling apart, and the vehicle is definitely not a welcome strain on any of these structures. This is the world they're introducing. A broken down, dilapidated world, where the viewer should be attentive at all times because any of these things could fall apart at any second. This is what makes this opening interesting. Because once this has been established, the sound of the vehicle fades out and we get to hear the world from the girl's point of view. What's fascinating here though is that while the music that is introduced denies what we've seen and heard so far, the visuals are still telling us this is not a place you want to be driving around. This contrast in the music to the sound and visuals is what makes this such a strong opening. Let's break down the music a bit, because that's important to show how drastic of a contrast it presents. The piece used here is Hitomi ni Utsuru Keshiki. If you have the albums, it should be track 6 on disc 2, or somewhere around there. The excerpt from this piece used in the show starts at 28 seconds into the piece and ends at 125 in the piece. The first thing you'll notice when it starts to play is the female choir that sings the main melody. This is accompanied by an arpeggiating harp and by pizzicato strings. This combination is often seen as heavenly, or light and airy in scoring, and you'll probably recognize this instrumentation at some level to be comfy or relaxing. This is due to the high timbres and pure tones of the harp in the chorus, with the quick and snappy pizzicato harmonic accompaniment. This instrumentation works in combination with the very high amount of reverb on all the instruments and the EQ being pretty mellow. It puts you in an almost dreamlike state, in a place above the clouds. But when you match this music to what you're seeing as the viewer, there's a beautiful disconnect. For example, if you don't know that that thing tied up is some sort of statue, it looks like a really creepy creature completely tied up in a dark abandoned factory. That should be a little bit concerning, no? Well, if you're just listening to the music, you wouldn't guess that this was out of place at all. And to me, that was even more unsettling when watching it through the first time. But if nothing else, it definitely piqued my curiosity. Upon a rewatch, the music seems to also match the blissful aloofness of our two protagonists. But it's really interesting that the music serves this kind of dual purpose in the first place. From here the music builds, adding in legato strings and building up the orchestration until its inevitable resolution. This build happens all while the girls are simply making their way through this dark, broken down factory. Not only does this cause intrigue or give insight into the characters, it also sets the tone for the majority of the show. That these light, airy, somewhat dreamy themes, not only in the music but also the writing, are going to be contrasted against a bleak and dark background. The cool thing about this idea, though, is that the light doesn't just make the dark stand out, but the dark makes the light stand out. It's a brilliant play off each other that works really well for this show. The sound design and music tell you all of this within the first 2 minutes and 39 seconds. I thought that was crazy cool. Beyond just this point, though, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the music representing the girl's attitude toward the world. There's evidence that points towards this idea supported in the sound design as well. Before the music is introduced, we have a pretty broad soundscape, full of room sound, rumbling, screws shaking, and water dripping. Once the music is introduced, however, all we hear is the sound of the vehicle and the music. It isolates the girls, represented by music and vehicle noise, from the rest of the world, giving them their own little sonic bubble. The music represents them either being unaware or purposefully ignoring the potential dangers of their travels represented by all the sounds focused on earlier that are no longer present. This scene, through everything, has definitely stood out to me the most and did its job of introducing the world incredibly well. The sound and music are able to tell so much. Obviously, the visuals play a big part as well, but that's what I was saying earlier about the light against the dark. You can't really show how powerful one side is without the other. And this show uses that idea so impeccably well throughout the whole show, honestly, but particularly in this opening sequence. The music is a perfect metaphor for the girl's attitude toward the world, and in combination with the visuals, presents GLT's overarching themes in a unique and interesting way. It's a great piece by Kenichiri Suihiro, but I might have to give the points on this one to the brilliant sound direction by Jin Aketagawa. 
The decision to use this piece to contrast the visual representation of the world was brilliant. This is a beautiful example of expressing narrative through sound and music. Hey guys, I, uh, I tried to make it in the two week mark, but uh, I'm gonna be honest, this was kind of a different video from what I usually make. I went a lot more in depth on like sound design and breaking down a scene entirely. And uh, the editing kind of kicked my ass <laughs> a little bit. When I first made it, I was like, this is this is too different. I don't like this. this is... But I'm uh, pretty happy with how it ended up in the end. I hope you guys liked it too. If this is received well or you want to see more Girls Last Tour discussion, let me know. I'm more than happy to talk about all sorts of different things. As I said at the beginning of the video, I had a lot of different ideas. This one kind of stuck with me the most and really just felt like I needed to talk about it. But uh, if you want to stay up to date with my stuff, you know, subscribe. If you want to stay up to date with me outside of YouTube stuff, you can follow my Twitter, which will be linked down in the description below. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video overall. I hope it was, you know, good. I know it was a bit different, but I hope you liked it nonetheless. As always, I hope you guys have a great day and a greater life, and I will see you in the next one.